This time on Road and Race, we talk about the ECU remap and go back to the rolling road to get the final horsepower figure. In the previous two parts, we say how much power a new exhaust, throttle body, airbox and underdrive pulley made by fitting them to Richard's car and then taking them to the rolling road to see how much power they made. In this episode, we talk about the final modification left, the ECU. A car's electronic control unit, or ECU, is basically a computer, and it controls everything to do with the engine. It manages when to inject fuel, how much, and when to ignite it. If it does any of these things wrong, such as inject too little fuel, or ignite at the wrong time, you'll get less power, but more importantly, you could damage the engine. If you make changes to the car, then there's opportunity to adjust the ECU to take advantage of them and release more power from the engine. When Richard bought the car, he found a receipt for a stage one ECU remap, but he didn't know if it was still being applied to the car. So he rang up the dealer and they kindly agreed to apply it again. When he got there, he found out that this simply meant taking an off the shelf configuration file and applying it to the car. We took the car back to the rolling road, looking to see how much more power above the 273.8 horsepower we got before. And wait for it, we got exactly the same result again. Both curves for torque and HP were pretty much identical. So it's probably safe to say that the ECU stage one remap was still active. Here's another graph showing the air to fuel ratios. Without going into too much detail, the ideal ratio is 14.7 to 1. From what I've read in the real world, you should expect something between 12 and 13 to 1. So the car is running a little richer than it did before all the mods. Still, all within safe limits, just burning a bit more fuel than before. Simple tests via the trip computer show fuel economy to be roughly the same. As the car was running richer, we took the car back to the dealer. Because all they do is apply a pre-configured file to the car, all they could offer us was to remove it. So that's what we asked them to do. So we went back to the rolling road. This is the result. We made a further 11 horsepower, a rise from 273.8 to 284.8. Torque was also up from 239 foot-pounds to 249. Not only was power up, it was consistently up across the whole power band, rather than before, when the gains were only right up at the top of the rev range. Obviously we were very happy with that. That's 25 more horsepower from stock, which is about a 9-10% to gain. It's even better when you consider that the car may have lost some power being 13 years old. Looking at the AFR, the car is running even richer. This left me with one question. Why was this? I'm not a tuning expert, so all I can do is report what we found and take some guesses. So here are my thoughts. I think it's fair to say that off-the-shelf, one-size-fits-all remap doesn't fit all. How could it? You need to take into account every single individual mod. That's probably why when we removed the Stage 1 remap and went back to the original Porsche map, that we got more power. Why is the car running richer? Leaks in any of the air supply intake pipes could do this, but we've checked for leaks by using an easy start spray, and there are none. We've also checked the fuel trim levels to confirm this, and they are in normal ranges. My guess is that as more air is now flowing through the engine, the ECU is compensating by adding more fuel, and maybe a little bit too much. The next steps? Well, we have two options. The first one is to stay where we are, we've got the 25 extra horsepower, and that's great. The car is running a little bit richer than before, but still within normal parameters, so we can live with that. The other option is for a custom ECU tune on a rolling road. Prices for this start at about £600, and no one can really tell me how much more power we could expect to get out of the car. So we'll keep investigating, and we might make a part four of this video in a few months time. Finally, as a bit of fun, it's interesting to note that Richard's car is now producing more power than the next generation Boxster. The 987 Boxster with the same 3.2 litre engine produces 276 brake horsepower and Richard's is now producing 9 more. Next time on Road and Race, I thought I'd try something a bit different. Follow me on my journey to get my rear plastic window repaired. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and hit the like button as it really helps us make more shows. Please feel free to get in touch by leaving a comment on this video and I reply to everyone. Links to follow us on social media are in the description box. Thanks for watching.